We decided that uh, JR and I just weren't comfortable by ourselves. Yeah, it was too much for you, Scott. And JR says, I'm not doing a very good job reading the news. I said, well, I need a partner. So we looked around to find some help. And uh, the week of September the 18th, 1983, we found Claire Stevens, who was uh, reading the news in some little teeny weeny radio station in Westchester. Was, was WZFM. It? And, uh, and all of a sudden, boom, right in front of our faces... A partner became available. I was working at a, uh, WABC and went on vacation the week before. You can call letters anymore. <laughs> I've tried to block it out of my mind, frankly. I went on vacation the week before to visit my folks in L.A. And when I got back, there was a message on my answering machine that said, Don't bother to come into work tomorrow. Ooh, <laughs> oh, wow. Now, that, now that's sensitivity. <laughs> Yes. I want Ross. This is Mark Mason. Look, don't bother coming in for work tomorrow. <laughs> exactly the way it was. Your last check is in the mail. So I became available almost immediately. <laughs> and after they after they fired him, the ABC people decided that uh, they didn't want him working with C100. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They didn't want me, but they didn't want anybody else to right. have me either. They didn't want him on there. They didn't want him on there over here. So let's go back and remember Ross's first days on the Z Morning Zoo. Mr. Ross, this will confirm the message I left on your answering machine at 4.40 this afternoon. You are still under contract to WABC Radio. This contract extends until November 14th inclusive. Well, gee, that's not what my lawyer said. Since your services are exclusive to WABC, you're prohibited from appearing on WHTZ. That's us. Fancy turns for Z100, yeah. Or any other station until November 15, 1983. Sincerely, <laughs> my buddy, Mark Mason. What are we going to do about this? Well, gee, I guess... Uh, Big much you can do, sir. Mark, Mark, are you listening? <laughs> Have a happy day, buddy. <laughs> New disc jockey here in town. Ross Britton. Oh, that was kind of like a, a handshake instead of a kiss, wasn't it, bro? <laughs> you, thought that, you thought that you were going to get the I thought shackled. I was going to get the big one there. So you were get Take the, me away to Rikers Island. To big ABC weenie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it's a matter of speaking, huh? Z100. All right, we got another rotten day. Dense fog this morning. Showers, a few thunderstorms. <laughs> we got it all. A high of 75. Showers and a few thunderstorms continuing through tonight and hopefully clearing up by tomorrow. High around 75. 72 currently at the all-new Z100. Good morning, Claire. Good morning. It's 72 degrees at 853. I'm Claire Stevens with a Thursday edition of the Z100 News Magazine brought to you by New York State Lottery, where you can make today count for you. On the front page, nine corrections officers have been charged with taking bribes from inmates. JR is next with the Z100 Sports. Z100 Sports. Good morning. Mike Bonnecker came to the rescue of the Orioles by pitching a three-hitter. The Orioles tied the World Series one apiece, beat the Phillies four to one. Today is a rest day. They'll play game three tomorrow in Philadelphia. Well, it's official. The Mets have signed AAA Tidewater manager Dave Johnson as the new manager of the Mets. Exhibition basketball last night. The Bullets trounced the Nets. Z100 Dense fog this morning with showers. I'm Claire Stevens for Z100 News. WHTZ, New York's newest radio station. Z100. The all-new, awesome Z100. It's 906 $100 bills up for grabs in moments. Stand by to win on the Z Morning Zoo. From Brett Michaels, and Ricky Rocket, a poison. Hi, this is Mick Jones of Foreigner. Happy birthday, Z100. Hi, this is Vanna White. Happy birthday, Z100, and congratulations on being New York's number one radio station. <laughs> Studio lines are open for those free fifth anniversary Z shirts. In New York, New York City. Just it's a life for me. 
got one of the better memories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the Z100 5th Anniversary Birthday Spectacular, live on WHTZ. 803, Scott and Ross and Jonathan B. Bell remembering a very special day in <laughs> zoo history. <laughs> yeah, Scott, that was the day a New York lottery winner went to cash in her ticket at a little gift shop in New York. There was some dispute about how much money she was to be paid, and during the course of the discussion, in a rash moment, I called the guy a dummy. I think it was a schmuck no, that you called. It, was, it wasn't quite a dummy, was it? <laughs> <laughs> and and what happened though was he happened to be listening, and we heard this call. Well, it was a, it was a, a lady that did not. She had trouble speaking English, and she went into his little uh, his little store to, to get her money from the uh, from the lottery. And here we go. Good morning, Z100 Complaint Department. Hello, is this the radio station? Yes, this is the radio station. This is the Z100. Yes, Z100, sir. Please connect me to the zoo cage. The zoo cage? Yes, I'm having the corrections in the story that you have just been broadcasting. Which story? The story about the lady who's winning the lottery ticket. Oh, the Long Island lady, Dora Montez? Right, there's the corrections in the story that you have been reporting. Well, my name is Scott, and uh, this is Ross. We're the, uh, the uh, announcers on duty. So How can we help you? Well, my name is uh, Jamish Patel. Oh. Your name is... Jamish? No, Jamish. Jamish, please get this right. Jamish Patel. Scott, I think it's a dummy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Jam. Wait a minute. You're in the paper. Wait a minute. J is it J A Y M E S H? This is correct. Jamish Patel. Oh yeah, yeah. You're the guy that uh, behind the cash register there. You sold that lady the uh, Lotto Forty Eight ticket. That's correct. And the famous person. Jamish, the famous person. That's correct. Jamish Patel. Please get this correct. <laughs> Patel. Please get this correct. What did we get wrong? Well, she's buying the ticket from me. She's thinking she's, uh, she comes in the store last week. She buys the ticket. She's only picking out four of the six numbers. But she's actually having them all right. Oh, she thought she had four of them. And she's, she thought she has four. She's getting them all. And she's jumping up and down. She's getting mad because she's wanting the $49.50. You didn't give it to her, did you? I did not give it to her. I'm trying to tell her that she is a millionaire. She's keep going, no comprehending, no comprehending, no comprehending. <laughs> Well, she doesn't speak English. I don't know what it is. I'm saying enough with the no comprendi. I'm saying you are you are no millionaire. If you do not pick up the ticket, forget no comprendi. <laughs> no compassion. No comprendi, no millionaire. Right. I got you, Mr. Rudd. <laughs> Patel. Please get this correct, Patel. <laughs> All right, now, Dora Montez thought she won $49.50 in Lotto 48, and you were trying to tell her that she won $2 million. This is correct. She gets up, she's storming out, she goes home. She's wait, wait telling, she goes home without the money? She goes home, no money. She gets home, she does not take anything. She told her children, the man does not have enough money to pay me. She thought that you didn't have enough money to pay her the $49? <laughs> of course, I have $2 million lying in the cash register. <laughs> Well, she thought, well, sir, she thought you only owed her $49.50. Well, the kids are coming back. The, they're coming. She's coming. Everybody's jumping up and down. No comprendi, no comprendi. <laughs> I bet they comprendi. <laughs> they're saying, where is the $2 million? And here I'm trying to tell them I'm not a bank. I'm trying to sell them to the Williston Park uh, branch to get the money. Right, yeah, to the lottery it. office. She <laughs> thought you were supposed to pay her the $2 million. She thinks, I'm the, what am I, a bank? I don't have the $2 million. I can just give them $2 million. The store, I'm making a good living, but not $2 million. <laughs> so you're right. How long you own that Great Neck gift shop, sir? I've been there for two years. Mm -hmm. It is a very good store. Right. Well, you know something? i got to stop for a second and uh, take my uh, my uh, animal hat off to you, sir, because you're an honest man, Jamish Patel. Uh, a lesser, Jamish Patel. I got you. Someone else would, I mean, someone like, um, well, I know a lot of people were just giving her $49 and taken the ticket and said, have a happy day, and she'd adore Montez with a smile and gone home, but you didn't do that. Yes, my wife would have done that. <laughs> right. Well, I would. I have a question for you. Yes. Who is, in the, who is the person calling me a schmuck? <laughs> well, I didn't, sir, that, that, that's not what he called you. He called you... A dummy, Scott. A dummy. That was, that was John Bell, B-E-L-L. -L. Jonathan Bell. Right. B-E-L-L. -L. Bell. Well, I'm writing this down because this is not good. This is not, how many people are listening to this program on the radio? Yeah, just just almost three million. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness. <laughs> and you're on the air. Too. Oh my goodness! Well, while we are talking, may I tell you about some of the wonderful things that we are having at the Great Lake Gift Shop? 
<laughs> you mean besides lotto tickets? Besides the lottery tickets, but not everybody is going to win the two million. But yeah, if they come, they will see many wonderful things. Like what? There is to be a selling dogs that are moving their heads back and forth. Oh, you can yeah. put them in the car. We have the Garfield with the suction cup feet you can put on the window. Ah, uh, Jamesh? <laughs> we are selling uh, Shea Stadium with the snowstorm, with the snow is coming down. Jamesh? <laughs> We have silly party in many different colors. I think John Bell was right. We have the largest collection of Super Bowls in the entire state. It's been, it's been nice talking with you, Mr. Uh, Patel. Jamish Patel, please get this correct. Right, I got you. No Caprende. We are selling garbage pail children. Goodbye. No Caprende. There you have it, the Jamish Patel lottery tape. Oh, yeah, that was great. 8.09 in the morning here at Z100. Uh, Scott and Ross and the whole crew sitting around the radio station reminiscing, remembering some of the uh, high points and the low points. And Coming up next, the Z Morning Zoo Commercial Hall of Shame. Now, you're going to hear two commercials here. First, you're going to hear a campaign that uh, I personally designed for Bob Martiri and Hillside Betting. <laughs> and to this day, it's, it remains one of life's great mysteries to me as to why as to why this campaign never worked. Uh -oh. Was that the uh, the Cowboy Bob or something? Cowboy like Bill, Ross. <laughs> yeah. And this lasted about uh, two weeks on air. And I, I personally wrote and uh, produced these commercials for Hillside Betting. And uh, to be honest with you, as you'll hear, they are brilliant. <laughs> Creative works of genius, Scott. Unfortunately, uh, the folks at Hillside Betting really didn't understand sophisticated marketing <laughs> at that time. So they canceled the account back then. So you hear Cowboy Bill, and then that will be uh, followed by our famous Tropicana commercial, which was, uh, it got started one day when uh, it was supposed to do a two-man commercial with Ross, and he was out playing tennis or playing with something. And uh, he wasn't here, so I did a commercial, and I said, right, Ross? And J.R. went, uh -huh. So that's how that got started. And finally, they didn't like that. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Z100 Hall of Shame. And now, here's Cowboy Bill and his horse, Herman, for Hillside Betting. Well, good morning to everybody, all you Cowboy Bill fans out there in Radio Land. It is me, Cowboy Bill, your singing Radio Bronco buddy for Hillside Betting, the East Coast's largest betting chain. Go over and tell them Cowboy Bill sent you by to take a look at one of them discount, low-price, silly, posturepedic mattresses. Got a letter here today from a lady in Eagle Beach, New Jersey. Said, dear Cowboy Bill, how come y'all never do no songs about Johnny Cash on the radio show? Yeah. Ma'am, here's one for you. Sing it, Bill. I keep a close watch on this bed of mine. This we sound fine. I love my hillside bedding all the time. All the time. Because they're cheap. Because they're cheap. They're so darn cheap. They're so darn cheap. I don't rhyme there, Cowboy Bill. Shut up and play the drums, dummy. I keep a close watch on this bed of mine. Bed of mine. Hillside Betting, sponsors of the Great Bed Race Hillside for bed. Jerry's Kids. Hi, this is the normal one, Scott Shannon. And the other one, Ross Britton, for Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice. Ross, I'm so glad you're here with me today because we've been getting a lot of requests for that dumb little noise you make in the Tropicana commercial. I'm not doing it, Scott. It's demeaning. Now, Ross, we could get just anyone to talk about how Tropicana is made with just the juice from oranges with nothing added. No preservatives, no no water and no sugar, but not just anyone can make that great noise you make. No dice, bozo. I have my image to think about. But, Ross, they don't want just anybody off the street to talk about that delicious Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice, mm -hmm. the only juice made from just juice. Forget it, Scott. I'm a man of principle. Come on, Ross, just one time. No. Well, what if I told you that Tropicana wanted to pay you a lot more money just to make that dumb noise? Would you do it then? Uh-huh. That's what I like about you, Ross. You're never too big to squeeze a little more juice out of an advertiser, right? Well, you know what they say, Scott. What? We see a classic. 